So briefly, I just talk about those three pathways in terms of colors. Mm -hmm. The green um, pathway is where we are, essentially our nervous system is calm. We are calm, we are alert, we're paying attention. Children, in children, they're able to follow directions. Um, They're wanting to play with each other. It's just like that good kind of zone for for people. Mm -hmm. But of course, we don't all live there. And we can't because we're humans. We are meant to face challenges every moment of the day. So when that safety system detects that something's amiss, and that could be from so many different directions, but either safety in an, uh, in, a, in an environment, like different types of background noises or smells or the type of movement that's going around, on around a child. It could be so many different characteristics. Um, that safety sensor automatically produces a platform that makes the child or the adult want to move. And that could be moving your mouth and saying things screaming, crying. It could be moving your body, kicking, hitting, running away. Mm -hmm. It involves great deal of movement. And again, it's not that the child is thinking I'm under threat. I need to move right now. The body just does it for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And as adults, we can become compassionately aware of when we have that shift when our heart starts to beat a little faster or a lot faster, when we feel a rush of, of, of uh, heat in our bodies, those kinds of, we can become aware and like, oh, I've shifted. I'm not very calm right now. But children don't have that innate ability. And so we have to, number one, as adults, recognize it in, our, in them and then proceed to help them in a way that's uh, appropriate to their developmental stage, not their chronological age, but their development. Mm -hmm. So you've got the green is calm, the red is agitated. And then there's another pathway, the blue, which is when human beings feel uh, very, very disconnected and they may feel stuck or hopeless or even frozen. And that is, that happens under extreme stress for long periods of time. So we also want to watch out for children who may be just checked out for weeks or months at a time and, and don't want to play, don't want to talk, have, don't smile or communicate very much. That's a pretty big sign that that human is vulnerable and they need a lot of emotional attunement and support. And, and for that pathway, the last one, um, so many of those children go undetected because they're not the ones pushing, screaming, hitting, biting. They sit still and to most observers, they're well-behaved. So it's important now for us as parents to start becoming the detective to be able to say, is my child in the, the red or the blue pathway and so on. But you mentioned that sometimes they can be blended. And so that might make it a little bit trickier for parents to, to be able to decipher what's going on. Yeah, well, I'm so glad you mentioned that we need to be aware of some of those children who appear to be so well behaved because those children are the ones that can go under the radar screen and and they need more support, but they're undetected. So thank you for mentioning that. And I've seen um, in here in the U.S. in our special education system, for example, I have seen a lot of children in that blue pathway because they have been so profoundly misunderstood for so long that rather than having these acting out behaviors, they just lose hope and they, and they just stop trying. Mm -hmm. And I'm very concerned about how, how uh, over time, when we don't properly identify those students uh, in that blue pathway in the hopeless phase, that um, that's just really, um, Mm -hmm. It needs to shift. So thank you for mentioning that. But yes, unfortunately, neuroscience is extremely complicated. And it's just in its really the 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 um, the field of neuroscience is young. Mm -hmm. So the exciting news is that they are finding out uh, that there are blended or mixed pathways so that you may actually see different features in you know, if you measure the physiology, you might see different features of the green and the red, for example, or the red or the blue going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I think for parents and, you know, for now, for our purposes, 
we can basically just look at the behaviors and take educated guesses. Mm -hmm. And the way we link that is, I think the easiest way to describe it is if the child is not in control and their movements are very stressed and you see things like sweaty nose, sweaty palms, uh, maybe if you feel their heart rate uh, and it's irregular or, or going up, that we can use those behaviors to understand children's behaviors and see when we need to hold a, hold a firm line um, or when we need to really move in with our social engagement, our emotional mm-hmm. attunement and help them feel more connected. For those in the blue, um, I just want to go back to that because you said it's also one of the traits is disconnect. And, you know, there are children who parents might label them or teachers might label them as being shy. So, you know, part of the green is the social engagement and so on. Is there one thing that parents can look to see, you know, maybe my child is not shy, but my child is experiencing a a form of stress um, that I'm not aware of. Because I think, you know, the green, the red one is obvious, (laughs) but I think parents might be like, oh, she just likes to be alone. Um, She's very shy. Everything is okay, but not realizing that below the surface, so much stress is going on in the child. That's right. That's right. So here's some of the key, the key um, things to look out for in, in that uh, presentation. Um, Number one, if the child across their different settings at school, at home, uh, where they feel safest, if they don't want to play and engage with you and with siblings and with friends across any setting, because play is a natural instinct in children, Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a flag to say this is may, may not be shyness, they, this may be more shutdown. Mm-hmm. Um, a shy child, what you'll, what you'll find is like in, um, and that would be a blended state that might be looking kind of green uh, or blue on the outside, but red on, on the inside. Um, a shy child, when they're in that situation and there's uh, those social cues that make them feel uncomfortable will kind of clam up and be like, you know, like kind of turtle and hold on to mommy and which is really adaptive, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but at home with their siblings, they're running around yelling, talking, you know, conversant with adults. So you wouldn't see this shutdown across all those different environments. Mm-hmm. So um, children who need more support from their mommies and daddies on separating. And by the way, this lap this last six months, I've seen so much school refusal, separation anxiety, um, worries about school. Yes, it's from the pandemic. We are seeing greater levels of children being in the red and the blue because we've gone through such a difficult time and are still um, struggling through it. So um, look, so look for and expect if your child is more clingy right now, that's very normative. Um, the way we work with that is through um, our, our playful interactions, noticing and witnessing when they're having a hard time. Say, oh, I can see this is hard for you, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just witnessing a child's struggle is enough mm-hmm. you know, to help them feel yeah. a little bit more like, oh yeah, this is hard. And then move through that feeling, move through that mm-hmm. nervousness. We're, we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail later on. 